Welcome to the Brainy Face Project. This is Michael from Binary Cafe, and this is the first video in a series of Photoshop training videos. This one's going to focus on digital imaging basics. Last year I was in Seattle and I took a bunch of pictures. It's always fun going through those pictures on your hard drive. It's amazing how many you can accumulate. And I had a Sony DSC HX 9V camera, which has a small sensor, but the image quality is pretty good. The thing that I wanted to point out here in this video is RGB versus CMYK and then raster versus vector artwork. I've been using Photoshop since 1997. I've used it professionally and uh, use it in my own business with my wife and taught Photoshop for several years as well along with other technical certification classes. That was the original Starbucks out there in Seattle. and. Basically what I want to do is talk about RGB versus CMYK and raster versus vector artwork. So this image here, and let me open up a different one. I'll open up the picture of the veggies here. That's a nice vibrant image. What I have in the upper left hand corner here is an RGB image that has 8 bits per channel and it's a JPEG image. The JPEG image is the same image that was captured to the memory card of my camera. The camera did not shoot RAW format. RAW is really good if you want to capture as much detail as possible and be able to manipulate the images in post production later on. But many cameras will actually compress the image down to a JPEG and that's, that's fine. It's just a compressed image and this is great for working on screen. Speaking of of working on screen, red, green, blue. This RGB color mode was created to display images on TVs and monitors and digital cameras and stuff like that. And when you have eight bits per channel, that's eight binary digits, that's basically going to uh, create a byte. And you have for red and green and blue the ability to express a value from 0 to 255 and that gives you 256 different color combinations and when you're working in a composite image like this you get to see all of that detail information composited into a beautiful image that has 16.7 million different colors and we can calculate this pretty quickly by saying 256 times 256 times 256 when you're working in RGB, you get 16,777,216. That's the number of colors that you have available. And that is a pretty wide color gamut. The range of colors is quite good when you're working with RGB images. If you want to create a color using RGB, if you go over and choose the color picker, you'll see that right now I've got the color black selected. And the values for red, green, and blue are all zero. And this is called an additive color space because there's a light that's being projected to create a color on my monitor. And if I change the value for red up to the maximum value of 255, type in 255, I can see that I've got the color red. And if I change that back to zero and I go to green and change that to 255, I can see that I've got green. I think you know where I'm headed. If I change blue to 255, now I've got blue. But as I increase those values, I'm actually going to get closer to the color white. So if I add red up to its maximum value of 255, I get kind of a purple color there. And if I add green and put its maximum value, now I'm up to the color white. And that's called an additive color. Now I also have the ability to use four color process. Now just a point, if you're working exclusively on screen and emailing photos and displaying stuff in video, stick with the RGB color space. CMYK is used for four color process and that's used to output images by using typically ink which is laid down on paper. And typically that paper is white or close to white. And this is called a subtractive color space because you're actually going to be subtracting away from the white on the paper by laying down inks with values ranging from, this is actually expressed as per, uh, percentage, so you would go up to 100%. 100% ink coverage for cyan, 60 for magenta, 0 for yellow, 6 for black. And that black is also called key or registration because these colors need to line up in order to have an image that looks good when it's output. So the CMYK color space is a way that you can mix colors as well. But if I look over here on the right hand side, I'm going to click cancel. I can see that right now my image is made up of red, green, and blue channels. By the way, if I go to edit, go to preferences, and go to interface, I have the ability to display those color channels in color, click OK, 
and now when I click on red, green, or blue, it actually shows me which channel is selected. When I choose the topmost channel, that's the composite of all of the different channels that are available. I'm going to convert this image to CMYK by going Image, Mode, go down to CMYK. Now notice on the screen when I do this, the image is not going to pop as much. And the reason why is because here I'm going to be working with a color mode which does not have as large a color gamut. So watch those colors. They kind of flatten out, doesn't look as good, but this is important if I'm going to have this image professionally output um, because it's going to use typically a four color process. Always work with your service bureau, whomever is outputting your brochures or your catalogs, to make sure that you're giving them the image types that they need. But notice now that I've got four channels. i got cyan, magenta, yellow, and black, and of course the composite channel up above. Now I'm going to go up to edit and say undo. And I wanted to talk about pixels. Pixels are picture elements and they are teeny teeny little dots captured by your camera or digital imaging device and they have different shades of color, in this case red, green, or blue. And I have pixels going across and pixels going down. I can view the number of pixels in an image by going to Image in Photoshop and choosing Image Size. This particular image is a high megapixel. If you have millions of pixels, that's expressed as megapixels and of course camera manufacturers are always trying to get us to buy by cameras that have higher megapixel. Don't be fooled by that. If you're serious about photography, you may want to start looking at some cameras that actually have larger sensors that capture a better image and allow you to capture images in RAW as opposed to the camera writing it out as a JPEG which is compressed and some of that original information that the sensor saw is actually destroyed in the process. But if I turn off resample image here, I have the ability to manipulate the number of pixels that are available in this image so that I can actually see how good it would look if I print it out on my inkjet printer or if I had it professionally output. As a rule of thumb, 72 pixels per inch is good when you're displaying images on screen. If you have an image that looks good on screen and it's 72 pixels per inch and maybe like 8 inches wide by 6 inches high, it probably won't look good when you print it out on your printer. You're going to see those little jagged dots because when you're printing to an inkjet printer or a laser printer, typically you want to have 150 pixels per inch. Now this image was shot with a high resolution camera so I could actually get up to 30 inches wide by 23 inches high and the image would look good. If I change this to 300, that's the amount of resolution approximately that I need for this to look good in a brochure. And of course I'd want to convert that to CMYK and make sure I had adequate resolution but I could actually go up to about 15 inches by 11 inches with this image here and that's pretty good resolution. Now if I hold down the Alt key on my computer on my Windows computer, that would be Option on a Mac. It allows me to change that Cancel button to a Reset button. That resets all of these settings. And now I'm going to have Resample Image selected. What that's going to do is kind of force dots to be thrown away or try to figure out, if you're trying to make an image bigger, what those dots should look like. And that uses a process of interpolation. That's more of an advanced topic and we can certainly spend a lot of time in future videos talking about that. But just as an example, I'm going to change the width of this image to 3 inches and click OK. Now, it got really, really small. I'm viewing the image at 25%. If I go to the hand tool and double click, it's going to fill this screen size. And I can see that I've got a lot of pixelization. I'm holding down the control key and pressing minus on the keyboard. And you can see that I've got these jagged edges here. And that's because my raster image, raster means that I've got these dots in the image. There aren't enough of them for it to look good even on screen at 400%. And if I zoom out, this is about as big as I can get on screen where the image still looks okay. But look, it doesn't look like the original image. And I effectively threw away those dots. So be careful when you're resizing your photos because you're actually throwing, throwing away important information in the image. Now I wanted to talk about vector artwork briefly. Raster versus vector. So I'm going to close this file here and switch over to Adobe Illustrator. When I created the logo for the Brainy Face project, I drew this in Adobe Illustrator. I love Illustrator. I draw cartoon characters, logos for clients, and it's a really fun application, really lets you be creative. And this particular image here, I created by using this tool here called the Bezier Pen Tool. And if I just click and let go and click and let go, and I can basically create 
uh, a shape and in this particular case I've just got uh, like three points here with mathematical relationships that define the line between those points and it's using math so it uses a very small file size but the great thing about it is if I select all of this logo and I zoom out I can scale this logo now to literally cover like the side of a building and because it uses mathematical relationships between those points in space there's a dot there's a dot there's the curve well I end up with very small file sizes and I don't need to worry about throwing away pixels because this is entirely different it uses vector artwork instead so when you're working in Photoshop you're using raster artwork that's made up of pixels and in Illustrator you're typically working with vector artwork and it's really fun if you want to learn how to draw cartoon characters and logos I can teach you how to do that in Illustrator going back to Photoshop here let me just open up one more image and again I've got red green blue is my color space I have 8 bits per channel which allows me with red green blue to get up to 16.7 million different colors this is a raster image at 72 pixels per inch it looks good on screen 150 pixels per inch is a good rule of thumb if you're printing to an inkjet printer and 300 is good if you're gonna have it professionally output but always call your service bureau and ask them what kind of images they want I'm going to resize this image here, just crop it down a little bit. I'm using Photoshop CS6 Extended. I just upgraded this weekend and I'm loving it. This new crop tool is really, really good. So, um, the other thing is with vector artwork that allows you to create logos and cartoon characters. So, I think that's it for the first one here for the first tutorial. And in future videos, I'm going to teach you how to do cropping, and filters, how to do watermarks, and borders and save your images out as different types and be creative with text effects and stuff like that so if you like the brainy face project in these videos let me know and thanks for watching take care